Yeah. Hi. Hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> episode three. Yeah, episode three. All right. <laughs> of the, whatever the fuck this is podcast. <laughs> Social deprivation yeah, Social podcast. deprivation podcast. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. Yes. Um, it's abbreviated. The SDP. SDP. S- it's not a kind of... No. No. What? Carry on. <laughs> Carry on. I, no, I had like a, a thought, like a tangent in my head that I ran away with. I was like, okay. this is not a kind of oil weight. No, that's STP. I wonder if Stone Temple Pilots buy its STP. Will it still be a <laughs> brand association? <laughs> how, did, how did you feel about episode two? I felt that it was a successor to episode one, that it was the logical progression from episode one, and that it was completed last week. And leading up to where we are now. I feel that it has led in no way up to where we are now, <laughs> other than now we are on number three. What'd you, how'd you feel about it? I liked it. All right. I, I, felt, I felt I did a much better job. You did. Uh, you were of, more you know, concise to the talking. point. <laughs> a lot of less, a lot less uh, ums and uh, yeah, likes uh, and uh, that uh, kind of thing. Like, like, uh, um, uh, uh, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. Well. More declarative they, speaking. They don't know exactly what we're talking about because we edited a lot of that out. You know what we're talking about was a demonstration of non-declarative speaking, Aaron. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I see your point. Okay, so you've been playing The Witcher 3. Indeed. For, since the, the last time we recorded yeah. till yeah. now, yeah. basically. I beat it this morning. It took yeah. five goddamn days. Good long game. Um, <clears throat> and if you had to give it a 1 to 10 fucking numbery, scaly review. 1 to 10 number scaly review. I would give it a uh, I'd give it like a 9.2. 9.2? Yeah. It is, there's a lot of bugs that need fixing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's some things about it like swimming that I can't fucking stand. It just doesn't work very well. But overall, it's a great game. Looks good. Plays well. Combat's fun. Stories, you know, Funny and kind of gripping, like mm. especially if you've played the other two, The Witcher 1 and Witcher 2. Yeah. You already know these characters. Yeah. And this is like the final in the series, so. Oh, cool. It kind of brings things together. The um, the hair thing? I, well, I can't remember what the, you called uh, it. The NVIDIA hair, whatever, hair physics. Hair, yeah. hair works, there you go. Yeah. NVIDIA hair works. Uh, you showed me earlier was... Very impressive. Um, the yeah. hair grows back now that, and it gets wet. Yeah, the, when you shave off the beard, it grows back. When very, you pick certain cool. kinds of hairstyles, they'll grow longer <laughs> as you play. Uh, I'm impressed with that. The water on the hair, that's the first time I could think of in a game where hair actually gets wet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's its a really nice touch. It just didn't work for shit for the first couple of days. Yeah. Because it would, it would just tank the frame rate. It just wasn't optimized and set up properly. Okay. Apparently, they used uh, the same process on consoles, from what I've seen in videos, and they had no problems. Hmm. But it was, you know, they had to change a lot to port of it. the graphics to accommodate for the consoles. Yeah. Like, the way it actually came out is not anywhere close to as impressive as it looked in the E3 presentation back in 2013. Well, that no, that always happens. Not well, always. Most well, of no. the time, yeah, yeah, but CD Projekt Red knows what they're fucking doing, and mm-hmm. unfo- it's unfortunate that the consoles held them back, and they had to scale the, the capabilities of the game down to is accommodate the, the consoles. Is this the first one that's been on console? Um, no. Witcher 2 was on consoles. Okay. Witcher 1 wasn't. Yeah. But that was quite a while ago. Yeah. Uh, what would you say was a highlight of the game? Not necessarily, like, storyline or anything like that, but just something that, like, happened or that you did that was just like, holy shit, that's, that's awesome. Removed from storyline? Like, not even necessarily removed from storyline, but, like, it doesn't have to be storyline. Well, there was a lot of elements <clears throat> in the storyline that, that were, that kind of had that, oh shit. Mm-hmm. type of thing because the characters are really well written and really for the most part well acted yeah and 
some of the characters, especially after playing the other games, you kind of give a shit, you know? Yeah. You build up a relationship with the character. It's like when you're reading a, a series of books. Yeah, you and, get to know them. Yeah, you get to know them. And like a Terry Pratchett, he died recently. Author of the Discworld series. Yeah, yeah. And his daughter, Rihanna Pratchett, is taking over the reins on the Discworld series. And I'm happy about that, but I'm not happy about that. Because I don't get to see what happened to a couple characters like... Um, Rincewind and Sam Vimes and Carrot Iron Founderson. Wait, because, why not? Because he's dead. The guy who created them and wrote their lives is dead. So she might pick them up, mm -hmm. but it won't be the same. It won't, yeah, it won't be necessarily what he wanted. Exactly. And But what if what if he left her notes? He's like, this is... Well, I'm sure that they, had, they discussed it to the best of their ability at length, but he had a... He's like on his deathbed, he's like... Well, his uh, last three books were written by dictation. Oh. Because okay. Alzheimer's, he just wasn't allowing you know oh, continuous wow. continuous clarity of thought or clear yeah. thought, and penmanship couldn't yeah. couldn't be done. Uh, he collaborated with a guy named Neil Gaiman, who has I've heard of him. written you know in books, video games, movies, uh, mm -hmm. Doctor Who. He did an episode for that. He's he's a good writer, and they've been writing shit together for like twenty fucking years. So he had a good portion of how the disc world came to be the disc world. Yeah. He, he was a big part of that. So he'll be helping Rihanna Pratchett, and hopefully they'll do a good job. But uh, it's it's a character thing. Like in The Witcher 3, you get to know the characters from the other games, and you give a fuck about what happens to them. So yeah. when some key character who's been there from the beginning dies, yeah, it gives you that, like, oh, it really, yeah, you type really of moment. Feel You're like, it. no, I didn't want you to fucking die. Not like that. <laughs> um, as far as kind of ah moments, the game has a lot of those, but for me they were more scenery. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm a, I'm a fan of these kind of RPGs, action yeah. RPGs. I fucking dig them from Morrowind up. And uh, in terms of general scenery, I've not played a game, including Skyrim modded to the nth fucking degree, I've not played a game with better forests. Yeah, oh, yeah, the, the forests, they look, they look fucking natural. Yeah. Like, it, it looks like... You're just walking into a forest rather than, you know, like trees specifically placed. And it, it, it looks very natural. It's exactly. nice looking. And we're Oregonians, so we know what a fucking forest looks like. <laughs> uh, it's, it's very well done. The terrain is very different throughout different maps. And they each have their a very distinct feel to them. Mm. And it's enjoyable to traverse the areas and uh, just look for shit. Yeah. Just go dungeon dive and see what the fuck you find. I like it. I wish there was more enemy types. Like, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of enemy types. Mm -hmm. But I wish there was more variants. Yeah, like, variety is always nice. I think that maybe at this point in the storyline, maybe dragons, <laughs> like traditional dragons, are extinct. I'm not sure. There mm -hmm. was one in the last game. But I would have liked to have, you know, just kind of come up over the crest of a hill and, and see a fucking 40-foot wingspan you know, screaming down at you and be like, oh no, and that, that would have been nice, but you get that to a degree with certain, uh, what they call draconids, which are like drakes, or not quite drakes, uh, I think they call them drakes, but they're not your traditional drake. Uh-huh. Well, okay, so, from my understanding, a dragon has four legs and wings, a drake has two legs and wing arm. It depends on what kind of lore you're looking at. Okay. Like, that kind of drake can be referred to as a kite drake. Oh, Okay. But it, like, it's it's all, it's really convoluted. Like I said, it, it's specifically based on what kind of lore you're looking at. Yeah. But, I don't know. You get you get that kind of with griffins and basilisks and shit in the game when you run across them. But yeah. even then, it's it, I, I wish that there was something bigger. Mm -hmm. I wish that there was some bigger fucking bad guy that you had to, you had to fight. However, I will say that when you're going through a cave that you just kind of accidentally fall down into, and... Suddenly, a cyclops starts running at you. That's that's pretty enjoyable. <laughs> nice. How is the leveling up system? The the tree scaling and the dense dense. Yeah, it, it takes a while to build up XP to level up to the really high levels. Mm -hmm. Like uh, by the time I beat the main storyline, I had done a whole shit ton of extra, you know, side quests and whatnot. Not all of them by any means. I haven't even discovered all the side quests to be done. But I think that when I when I beat the last mission for the primary story, I was level thirty three. 
Okay. And it took me a week to get there. So it, it takes quite a bit. Like, let's yeah. say it's 2,000 points per level, I think. Yeah. And you kill one monster, you might get, like, 6 XP. Okay. Here, get, give the people a little bit more... Um, all right, so you beat it in a week, yeah. but how many hours a day were you playing? Oh, fuck. Uh, I'm currently unemployed. And have not felt like really going and doing shit. So let's say, on average, 12 hours a day. Okay. That gives, that gives people a better idea. Yeah, it. so yeah. maybe 60 hours this week. Yeah. And I know that they have DLC coming. CG Project Red, the company that released the game, they've always just kind of given out their DLC. They don't charge for DLC. That's awesome. And they are they have like a five-piece thing of DLC coming. And the big chunk of that DLC will be another 30 hours worth of story. Nice. I don't know if that'll open up another land or mm -hmm. or what. There's going to be a, a good amount of, you know, DLC that I can look forward to and other people can look forward to. Uh, which is excellent because, it's, like I said, it's supposed to be the last game in the series, so. Yeah. They'll probably, you know, do They're a lot of uh, tying up loose ends and things. Yeah, well, I think that what they're, what they're probably going to do is uh, there's a character named Siri. Okay. And in the game, you're looking for Siri. You try to find her. She's uh, like a daughter to Geralt. He trained her. And he's hunting her down. She is the cause for a lot of bad shit happening. Or involved in a lot of bad shit happening. Inadvertently, or...? Yeah, no fault of her own. And uh, I think that likely what that big chunk of DLC is going to do is focus on her. Yeah. Like, make her a... Uh, Make her a more playable character. God damn you, phone. <laughs> <laughs> Make her a more playable character and give you an opportunity to use her abilities. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. That sounds cool. Um, what about uh, weapons and armor and things like that? Like, is there a good amount of that stuff? Or is yeah, it yeah. like... Yeah. Like, there's a nice variety of... Different well, I mean, you, you get your, your, what have become standard armor pieces. You got boots, gauntlets, torso, and legs. Uh -huh. So, those those are what you got. It's not like it was with Morrowind or anything. They haven't taken it back to that level. But yeah. you have, uh, I, I don't know how many different armor sets and weapon types. Like, I okay. keep running across the same weapons over and over again, but that's yeah, just because yeah. they're kind of the generic yeah, the, sword of the people or some shit. very common weapons. So you carry them around until you reach your fucking maximum weight, then you go sell them to different merchants to get yeah. coined, but yeah, there's there's a good amount. There's a, definitely a good amount and a good amount of items, uh, a good amount of food materials, alcohols that you need for mm -hmm. crafting potions and shit. Nice. Um, I liked uh, what you were showing me earlier about the um, like, when you defeat a, a monster and you mount <clears throat> part of it like body parts on like a yeah. sack on the side of your horse and you get like bonuses for that yeah, depending That's really on cool. what it is you can put like a wraith head in a sack or hang a griffin head from a hook mm. and like it'll give you you know plus 10 chance percent chance to dismember somebody in combat or plus five percent on your fucking magical abilities or something yeah. like that all right uh, anything else you'd like to say about? No, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, good game. Buy it. Yeah. It's it's one of the few games I've played over the last five or maybe even ten years that I could say is worth the 60 bucks that they're charging for it. Yeah. Okay. I can't endorse it enough, really. Okay, so on to the next topic. Um, topic. Topic. On to the next topic. Uh, Alright, so... In our first episode, which is out uh, on YouTube, um, is there really a point in saying that? Because won't the other, the the one before this and this one, won't they just be out on YouTube as well? Yeah, but be probably before this one. You know, unless we put this one up, like one, three, two, <laughs> five, four. <laughs> we can we can do this however we want, Trapper. Yeah, I know, I know. We can put them in backward. I don't fucking care. Might even be, might even be better that way. Well. You yes, we can. Yes, we can. In the back, oh, they're speaking Swedish. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Sorry, Swedes. Is any Swedes listening? I'm not making fun of your language. I'm just making fun of your language a little bit. <laughs> I'm sure you make fun of our <laughs> language. Yeah, fucking Americans always <laughs> talking like this and shit because they're all from the Ozark Mountain Range. Brown. 
<laughs> Whiskey and taters. Go ahead. All right. So in our first episode, we mentioned uh, that we hadn't heard of a uh, in, an independent Hulk movie coming out in the Marvel Universe. And while I was putting together, um, you know, images to be played in the back background with our talking, uh, I found an image that showed uh, a lineup of movies coming out. And there was an image for an independent Hulk movie called World War Hulk. Uh, I can't remember specifically the year that it said it was coming out. It was like 2017, 2018. Yeah, and I found absolutely no yeah. solid evidence to support the existence of said movie. Yeah, we were we we were like, oh, we made a mistake. Let's you know, let's talk about it and talk about what we found. Did we, did we make a mistake though? Did we, we say that there was a Hulk movie coming? No, no, we, okay, so it felt like we made a mistake by saying that, that we, that there wasn't one coming, but then we found that there... Hold on, so we thought we made a mistake, we corrected a mistake that we didn't make, and now we're correcting the correction of the original mistake that we never made in the first place? No, we're just telling the people that, what we did. What did we do? We found evidence for nothing that corroborates what we said in the original podcast. Okay, so we discovered <laughs> we discovered nothing about something that was not to be discovered. Yeah. And now we're letting them know that the, what we just said. In the future on topics like this, could you please draw me a map? No. Ah, damn it, I'm lost. <laughs> Fuck it then. <laughs> Moving on. There's no there's no Hulk movie coming that I was able to find. Yeah, no uh, Hulk movie. Nice as it might be, there ain't one. Um, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I'll just have to suffice for, you know, be happy with him getting pummeled by Iron Man on occasion and vice versa. Yeah. Um, vice versa. Go back into Swedish again. Fuck. <laughs> if there was a Hulk movie coming out... Mm -mm. Where do you think that that would fall in the timeline? Uh, fuck. I think that if they were to make a Hulk movie, it would probably be just somewhere here on Earth. It'd be like the other two Hulk movies, just written better. I don't think that they'd go with the whole Grey Hulk story arc, because there's shit that leads up to that. I don't yeah. think they'd go with the, the, the fucking World War Hulk, whatever, mm -hmm. story arc, because there's a whole lot of shit that leads up to that, with even characters that haven't been introduced yet. Who call themselves the Illuminati. I shit you not. <laughs> Sending him off to another fucking planet to just be rid of him. Mm -hmm. Because he's a big green nuisance. He tends and, to be a nuisance, yeah. Yeah, and his pregnant wife is on a ship with him when they send him out. Or his pregnant Wait. She Hulk or some shit. I don't know. Wait a minute. She Hulk. Isn't She Hulk his cousin? Well, then it's not fucking She Hulk. It's his wife. Whatever. He has a wife? Sure. I didn't know he had a wife. Yeah, that storyline it does. Uh, well, that Ship happened. blows up, pregnant wife dies, he comes back and declares war on Earth. Oh. So that's what happens to that story arc. After okay. he becomes the green king of some other planet with some other people that he got from some other time during the fucking, you know, the, the, the fucking Grey Hulk mm -hmm. thing when he was on some planet called Scar or some shit like that where he was able to be killed. Like he was vulnerable on that planet. Weird. So you'll see pictures of, like, in, in the comics, Hulk's got battle armor on and shit. Yeah, yeah. But then it comes back to Earth with the intent of Smash. Because Hulk Smash. While I was, while I was doing uh, some research, I found that there is a comic book series called Hulk Smash. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like a team. It's like a, it's like a Hulk team. Uh, it, it doesn't consist of all Hulk, but, like, there's Hulk, Hulk and then, like, other people. Hulklings? Hulk, yeah, Hulk-ish people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, there's, like, a team of people, like a superhero team, and it looked ridiculous. Hmm. <laughs> I don't, I don't well, know. Well, superhero teams often do look ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with Wolverine now. I know that, what, year before last, or, no, last year, they killed him. Well, yeah, they killed him. And they killed him to make way for a team of Wolverine. Yeah. Genetically inspired. Blah, 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 yeah. That I don't give a shit about. But, um. I, I, I heard that. It was like the next 
X-Men movie is going to be the last one where uh, Hugh Jackman plays Wolverine. Okay. So that'd be interesting if they killed him off. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I don't know anything about his, the storyline of him getting killed in the in the comics, but <clears throat> I'm yeah. sure it was spectacular. I, I I read that comic. I hadn't read a Wolverine comic in a long, long, long fucking time. But when I found out that he died, I downloaded it and watched it with a CPR reader or some shit on the fucking computer. Oh, no, was it? Uh, it was, I mean, was okay. it was it fitting? Um. <clears throat> Well, uh, spoiler, blah, 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 blah. Nobody yeah. did I, fuck, Spoilers. I don't, I don't know if you guys give a shit to read a goddamn comic. Who does these days? Fuck comics, pictures, and books. Fuck all that shit. Um, I say that being an artist myself, and that's kind of strange. <laughs> like, I think a, a smart, small piece of my soul just aimed for a kick to the balls for a second. Yeah. Uh, what they did is they stripped him of his abilities. Mm-hmm. Of his healing abilities. And... He killed the people who were key in doing it, mm-hmm. but in the process, his entire body got coated with adamantium, and he managed to make his way outside onto like a, a patio of this massive facility, where he fell to his knees and hardened. So he died. So he just being becomes a fucking statue. Statue. Yeah, he got coated in molten adamantium, and lost his healing abilities. Yeah. So he just dies there. Wouldn't... Okay, so... Even if he did have his healing abilities, if he got covered in adamantium, wouldn't he still, like, base, basically be dead? Yeah. Like, what? then what? what's the point of even taking away his healing abilities? Uh, uh. To try to make it seem more permanent when we both know that it won't be? Well, yeah. I mean, they kill off fucking comic book characters all the time, and yep. then, you know... A year later or so, like, they're like, oh, guess what? He's back. Yeah. Uh, and he's got a new costume. That's just kind of how fucking comic books work. And maybe a new power. This episode of this new podcast weaknesses. is brought to you by me coughing. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what they're going to do with it. I don't really give that much of a shit. <laughs> like, I, I read it for the novelty. Like, hey, they killed Wolverine. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, is it, there? There comes a point in the comics where I just don't care. Yeah. Same thing happened with Hulk. Like I read up today on a lot of Hulk storyline related shit because I knew that we were going to be talking about it. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I found that was interesting was when Hulk comes back after wife death, baby death, whatever, he comes back to Earth. The first person in this team of the Illuminati he goes after is Charles Xavier. But there was an event. Wait. Charles Xavier is a part of the Illuminati. So is Iron Man. And fucking Dr. Stretchy Arms and fucking Fantastic Four. <laughs> Reed Richard. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're part of the Illuminati. Uh, whatever. But he goes after Xavier and he doesn't kill him because he feels bad for him. Because there was an event called uh, M-Day. Uh-huh. Okay. Where Scarlet Witch, who was in the last Avengers movie, yeah, yeah. took away the powers from all but, like, just over 198 mutants. Jesus. Yeah. So, apparently, this character that neither of us gave two quarters of a shit about in the last movie does become a fairly prominent character later on. But okay. just not right now. Yeah. So, basically, she just takes away the powers of, like, all the mutants. I think you read the comic book. I just really... read kind of the cliff. I mean, so just, yeah. Yeah, but... She's used to destroy their powers to take their abilities away. One thing I really didn't like about her character was, like, like at, there was no point where you're like, oh, I understand what her powers are. Yeah. Like, it looks like she has telekinetic abilities, she has the ability to, like, fuck with people's minds. Yeah. It seemed like a weird, flashy, you know, Superman-esque thing where it's like, well, you know, if we want her to do something, yeah, we'll just, add a we'll just let it let it happen and be like, yeah, she could do that the whole time. Oh, uh, yeah. And like, uh, what? <laughs> Characters like that are strange because they're, they kind of un- unbalance the power. Exactly. And that's not always good. It's rarely ever good, really. Super strong characters are just kind of boring. Like Superman. It's fucking boring. Yeah. I it's actually... Like, oh, what's going to happen? He's going to get into a fight. Oh, the odds are in his favor all the fucking time. Oh, wait. Kryptonite. Nah. 
Uh, Except Doomsday. Well, yeah, Doomsday kills him. Yeah, temporarily. Well, yeah, temporarily. It's always temporary. Yeah. I, I wonder if there is any comic book character that has been killed and just fucking stayed dead. I think The Flash might have. Maybe. I, I, haven't, I haven't read that. I know The Flash died. What happened to the original Green Lantern? No, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I think he... I don't remember. He might, he might have died, he might have gave up the mantle. I don't fucking remember. Mm. I know The but, Flash died when he, he ran so quickly trying to tear through space and time or something that he burned up. Hmm. Like changing time to make a bunch of bad shit not have happened. Kind of like the whole Superman around the world yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he completely like sacrificed his life to do so and stayed dead. So that's one character I can think of that died and didn't come back. Of course, well, there's time yet, isn't there? Well, yeah, he'll probably be coming back, or they'll make a new one. Yeah, you know, something. Speaking of Superman, I had uh, an interesting conversation with uh, my girlfriend about um, the whole, you know, Superman thing, and uh, she like. She made me look. She she gave me an idea of, of how to look at it in a way that I had never looked at it before. That makes the character more interesting. In that he is like all powerful, but he has you know his code of ethics and you know yeah like ultimate good type of thing. But because he has all this power, he has to be gentle. Like, yeah. he has to be very gentle with everything and constantly trying not to well, yeah. kill and everything. And that's the same with a lot of, you know, comic book characters. Like, Spider-Man addresses that in one of the books. Yeah. He talks about how he has to be careful when, when he shakes somebody's hand and all that jazz. Yeah. But Spider-Man's, not, like, nowhere, nowhere near, near strong. Nowhere near strong, no. But it's not something uniquely, to the, you know... yeah. It's not something unique to Superman. Mm. Well, let's move forward. Um, all right. I am definitely looking to that. Looking forward to that Batman v Superman movie, though. Uh, oh, well, okay. So, well, let's, let's stay here for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am also looking forward to that movie. Uh, I'm not really looking forward to Ben Affleck playing Super or uh, playing, playing Batman. Batman. What? Yeah. What? But, what does Batman actually take, though? Well, yeah. Batman's more. Stature and action than words to mm-hmm. me, and I, I didn't like the the digital voice. I didn't either, but I, that's strictly. I think that's strictly when he's in that fucking you know, gauntlet outfit. Or I'm whatever. hoping that I'm hoping that it's that way. I'm sure it is, unless he's got some device in his mouth. Yeah, because there's other scenes where he doesn't have a full face helmet on, mm-hmm. and the only scenes that it makes sense for him to have a full face fucking helmet on is when he's going to take on Superman. Yeah, when he's about to fucking. But I, I I don't see how that armor is gonna fucking <laughs> like I mean Superman can punch through. Maybe it's lined with kryptonite. I don't fucking know. Yeah. Do Probably you, lined with you, kryptonite. Do you think they're gonna bring kryptonite into this? Of course they will. Superman's all red in the eyes and shit, which makes me wonder if he's under the influence of a uh, red kryptonite. Red kryptonite. But also, I mean, it, it, huh. it's pretty. It seems pretty inspired by the Frank Miller novel. And if it is. Then Red Kryptonite never came into play in that. Okay. Batman was kind of old. Yeah. He didn't want to. Well, that that's what they're they're saying about this Batman that he's like older. he's very experienced. He's very gristled. I mean his his armor is fucking you know covered in like dings and scratches. It's very worn in. Well, in the Frank Miller one that I can't I can't remember the name of right now. He was. Uh, late 50s, early 60s, or something like that. Damn. He had not, or maybe even older, he hadn't been the Bat for 10 years. Oh, okay. And street gangs had just fucking taken over Gotham. Mm-hmm. Right. And he decided to get back in play. And he went after one gang member in particular, the big sharp-toothed motherfucker, and uh, basically using his skill and the tech that he had, he shit on the guy. Yeah. You know? And uh, starts being a problem for the police again. And starts being a problem for the government again. Yeah. And the president enlists Superman to take him out. And okay. Superman 
goes to try to stop Bruce. He doesn't want to kill Bruce. Well, or anything, of course not. Unless it comes to it. He's willing to take it to that degree. Is he? Yeah. This is much later in his life, too. Yeah. Like, shit's changed for him. And uh, the whole time that they, that, like, they fight. And they fight fucking well. Mm. And uh, I can't remember what the character's name is. I don't think it was Green Arrow, but it might have been. It was uh, He had one arm. I don't like Green Arrow. I don't either. <coughs> but, um... Fucking Robin Hood wannabe. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh... He, he gets... He poisons himself. Batman poisons himself to make it seem like he dies. Okay. And once his heartbeat stops, Superman, you know, basically declares him dead. And then when they're at the funeral, he hears a heartbeat under the ground that he fucking somehow recognizes as being Bruce's. Uh-huh. And Bruce has basically recruited the former gang members of the one dude who now respect him for beating him. So and he's training them all to be Batman. So he's building an army of Batman. <laughs> oh, man, I've got to read this. This sounds really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll figure out what it's called after we're done here. <laughs> I don't think that they'll take the movie in that direction, well, of but they might not. they might lean it slightly that way, so it might not have I mean, shit to do with the red kryptonite. I, I feel like they're going to, I mean, like, I really don't want Ben Affleck to be the, like, prominent Batman for a while. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, but I feel like they're definitely leading up, like, they're going into, like, Justice League. They're definitely going to do a fucking they, they Justice are, League they movie. Are. And he's, you know... Despite what people say, I mean, he can act he under can, the right circumstances. Yeah, he he's okay. He's a better director than he is a fucking actor. He's, he's gotten to be a much better actor later on in life, though, than yeah. he was younger. Okay, well, I haven't I haven't seen like the only reason anything. he fucking made it at all was because of, you know Kevin Smith's movies and shit. Well, yeah, Kevin kinda, Smith kind of propping him up there. But yeah, and then and then what's his name? Uh, the other actor that he was always in movies with. Uh, um, uh, you know, fucking, what was it? Finding for, or no, no. Um, uh, Matt Damon. Matt Damon, yeah, yeah. 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 I, yeah. I'd say that Matt Damon's done a hell of a lot better for himself than fucking Affleck has. Oh, yeah. But, uh, have you seen The Town? The Town, ta- uh, with no. With Jeremy Renner and fucking Ben Affleck? Uh-uh. That's a good movie. Okay. He does a good job in that. Uh, how about Gone Girl? Have you seen that? I haven't seen that. I really want to see that. Does a pretty good job in that, too. But, I mean... what I'm saying, though. Under the right circumstances, he can act pretty well. Yeah. And he's a much better director than he is an actor. But yeah. And didn't he direct Gone Girl? Yeah. From what, I'm, well, from, what I, from what I'm aware. And so, I I feel like... I mean, since he is a, he is a good director, and playing a part in a movie that he's directing, like... You know, he doesn't necessarily have to try and do... He doesn't have to be what somebody else wants him to be. Like, he knows exactly what he wants that character to be. Yeah, but he should know exactly what the fuck is asked of Batman. Well, of course. At this point, you know, but, everybody knows what the fuck is asked of Batman. But, you know, fucking... He should have known what was asked of fucking Daredevil. But, I mean, that movie... <laughs> That movie should have been fucking left on the cutting room floor. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But... The problem is that, that movie's kind of followed him like uh, some sort of bad dogma. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's, it's tainted what people think about his acting abilities. But really, I mean, that was just like his shittiest role. And yeah. It was a point in time where he was just taking work. And I well, can't... of course. I mean, when you're an actor and you're in that career or that industry, you just... I mean, you have to do yeah, that. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta grab what's put on the table in front I mean, of you. Yeah, I mean, you ha- everybody has to fucking pay bills. So I don't, I don't fault him for that. I'll no. never watch it again. Don't really remember much about it in the first place. That's I, probably for the best. But. The only thing I really remember about it was like that scene where he's like, "Oh, when it rains, I can see everything." It's, <laughs> it's just like that's fucking this is stupid. cheesy and fucking come on. <laughs> yeah, the, the TV show or Netflix show, much, oh. much better. Oh yeah, much better, much better. Speaking of Batman, I recently got a really awesome uh, collection of uh, all put into a graphic novel of Batman versus Judge Dredd. Huh. Really, like, every one of them is awesome. Batman versus Judge Dredd. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. And, um, the first one, Judge Death, gets, uh, like, this belt that allows him to travel between dimensions, and he comes to Gotham City, and he starts, like, trying to take over, and uh, Batman ends up, I think ends up killing him, but accidentally gets sucked into Judge Dredd's dimension. Okay. And uh, becomes, like, a criminal. <laughs> and Dredd, like, hunts him down and, like, Already arrests a him. Well, yeah, but... It, you're it, vigilante, it, you're a criminal. It's Can really, really good. And oh. the, the art's really good. I can't remember the artist's name, but... Uh, you should bring he, it over here with you next time. I will. Or actually, I might. I think I have it. I'll leave it here, then. You remember the um, heavy metal magazines? Yeah. This, this artist, he is... Uh, Heavy metal. One of my favorites from the heavy metal. Uh, 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 shit. No, no, I don't have it with me. Uh, damn it. I'll bring it over next time. But yeah. Um, I'm sure that little Frankenstein thing peaked on the fucking audio there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a small Frankenstein monster, doesn't it? That sounds, that sounds like... Uh, oh, I can't remember his name. Son of Frankenstein? Yeah. Or something like that. Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. I wonder if they're ever going to make another Frankenstein. I hope they have. Fuck it. They probably shouldn't. They made I Frankenstein. Yeah, and fuck I Frankenstein. I saw the trailer. And the one with it, De Niro was the best one. Oh, it looked so bad. Wait, I, no, I saw I Frankenstein. It was shitty. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, the one with Robert De Niro, where he played Adam, which, for anybody listening that doesn't know, that's the only name that Frankenstein's monster ever really ever. gave himself was yeah. Adam. The first man. Yeah. But that one was pretty fucking true to the book, too. I've read the book and listened to the book. book is good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the Batman vs. Superman movie. Also something I'm looking forward to, and I don't know if they're still going to do it, as far as I know they are. Uh, I think Peter Jackson, or no, Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. He's directing a movie called The Voyage of the Demeter. Okay. And that's about the ship... Do you remember uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula from, like, 1996? With Keanu oh, yeah, Reeves yeah, and yeah, Gary yeah. Oldman. Yeah. The ship that shows up and it's got the guy lashed to the wheel. Uh-huh. That's the Demeter. Okay. And the book is all about the torment that those motherfuckers go through on the trip bringing Dracula from yeah. Romania to the UK. Okay. I'm looking forward to that, too. That sounds like it'll be a really good book. I, I'm, a, I'm a monster junkie for anybody... Listening, I, I fucking I gravitate to shit that has to do with horror. Yeah, uh, for some reason, we haven't uh, discussed much of it yet, but I, I guarantee we will discuss a lot of horror really in the shit? future. Uh, That's because yeah. this thing for like the last three episodes has been primarily fucking Marvel movie and nerd video game related shit, <laughs> yeah. which I'm perfectly fucking at home with. There haven't been any horror movies. As of late, that are really uh, nothing. You know, worth nothing stands out. Talking about, I did like uh, Dracula Untold. Or I think that's what it was oh, called. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I like that movie quite a bit. I I thought it might be crap. You, but you liked it? it? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I liked it. Okay, I've watched it a couple times. Okay. It uh, it kind of started a, a meme with me and one of my former coworkers. Yeah. Because uh, I had him watch it and he watched it on my phone. And uh, <laughs> I was like, hey, no, 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 pay attention, pay attention, watch, watch, flock of bats. <laughs> and because uh, Dracula turns into this cloud of bats, and I kept calling it a flock of bats because fuck knows what the plural for them is when they're in yeah. some sort of a, a grouping. I don't yeah, know what yeah. the hell it's called, so I was calling it a flock. And then, like, a couple days later, I get a text message, it's like, flock of bats. <laughs> and it started a goddamn meme from there between the two nice. of us. <laughs> We'd say it, and people would come in and they're like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? We're like, don't worry about it. It's a flock of bats. Fuck off. Uh, but yeah, I liked it. I recommend it. All right. But other than that, I haven't seen a whole lot in the in the realm of monsters or horror that actually floated my boat, other than a movie called The Afflicted. And I recommended that one to you. I think already. I have. I, I think you gave me that. Uh, I still haven't watched it yet. It's a found footage movie where a guy gets infected with vampirism and documents the transformation. And it's pretty goddamn enjoyable. Hmm. Especially for a found footage movie. Those are done to death at this point. Speaking of found footage, um, a movie that I would like to see, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> Have you seen any of his movies? You're talking about the Sasquatch one? Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, you seen it? I yeah. haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I watched it. 
Any good? Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, just kind of. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. It's just kind of yeah. It's in the it's in the realm of the the Blair Witch type of thing where it's mm-hmm. like you don't actually see. Yeah. Anything. I mean, you, I mean, until the very end, and when you do see it at the very end, it's one not where you were expecting. Two, pretty disappointing. Is it Chewbacca? No. <laughs> it is a overweight naked white woman. Uh. Okay. What? Okay. Exactly. But the tension leading up is the only thing in that movie that matters. Okay. Like okay. the tension building's fine. And if you're not paying attention, you might even miss what I just said. Yeah. Okay. So the spoiler alerts <laughs> apply to you too, Aaron. You better be fucking wearing what you ask about. <laughs> yeah, I just I just noticed that. I'll um, tell you shit. <laughs> I will tell you shit. <laughs> I'm not ruining anything for you. I so. saw um, Frankenstein found footage movie on Netflix. Yeah. A while back. I liked it. Uh, it was okay. Yeah, thought it was good. I, Very like you know. It kept in the in the vein of the original story. Yeah, like it made sense. Like the last place you see the character of Adam is up at the Arctic Circle, and mm. yeah, there that's where that movie takes place. So yeah, yeah. It, I had no real qualms there. Uh, yeah. I thought it was good. It again, it didn't really show the creature. Yeah, Which like, is, except for, like, at the very end, and he, like... Yeah, and that's, like that's exceedingly the rare off. these days. Like, people that make films don't know how to ratchet up tension anymore. Yeah. They're they, just like, they just, okay, we're four minutes in. Show the monster. Don't let, don't have people lose attention. Yeah. Just show it. Like, I like that about Godzilla, too. The, the, I still haven't the seen that Godzilla one. movie. Still haven't seen it. One of the first times you're actually exposed to Godzilla, you've already been exposed to another creature. That I kept calling Mothra. It's not fucking Mothra. Uh is it, like, is it one of the, the, like, monsters, like, the classic monsters, or is it a completely... It's something completely new. Oh, okay. They call it a Mudo. A Mudo? Yeah. And, uh, you see it wrecking shit mm-hmm. at, at a airport, like you do when you're a giant monster. Oh, well, yeah. And then there comes a point where Godzilla's foot steps down in front of a window, and it has this thunderous thump when it hits, Yeah. and then dead silence. And I fucking love that part of the movie. Just because it shuts everything down. Yeah. Like him stepping down and everybody stops screaming. They're just like, just oh like, no. You know, oh. just, just lost in, <laughs> in fear. And I fucking love that. Aren't they planning on making another one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, with Mothra in it, actually. <laughs> the only thing I didn't like about that movie was the uh, the creatures that Godzilla was up against. Huh. I thought like there were lo- multiple? Yes, there's, there's two. Okay. And they, they look too... Goddamn stream streamlined for me. Okay. They look artificial, and I don't like that. Yeah. Godzilla don't. He's lumpy. Yeah. He, he, he's lumpy and organic looking. From the, yeah, from the from the the screenshots that I've seen, he looks a lot more like the original Godzilla yeah. than the fucking what was it? It was like two thousand the two thousand fucking Godzilla movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a. Uh, uh, nineteen ninety nine. Okay. The one with Matthew Broderick. Yeah. In New York. That movie sucked so much. Dude. I liked it just because the dinosaur looked cool. But yeah, it wasn't but fucking Godzilla. It wasn't Godzilla. Nor was it a dinosaur. It was just like a dragon thing. And it was... Yeah. It looked cool. I liked the look of it, but it wasn't Godzilla. This one looks like Godzilla. Like, it's a good recreation of Godzilla. Yeah. But I didn't care about the story at all. I think that they fucked up mm. by taking a character out too early. Hmm. That's as far as I'll go on that, I guess. Okay. I don't want to spoil too much for you today. <laughs> I'll spoil something else later, I'm sure. I'm sure there will be spoilers. I mean, yeah. We're gonna... Welcome to the Spoil Shit For You Split Podcast. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Social Deprivation Podcast. That's how we're doing it. We're ostracizing ourselves from the <laughs> podcast circuit because people won't want to listen because of us giving shit away. Uh, Me, primarily. Yeah, shit I, away. I, I find myself... <laughs> Telling people like, "Oh yeah, you like podcasts? You should check this out." Oh wait, have you have you seen the Avengers yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, ruining people's ambitions. <laughs> One movie at a time. All right, but um, all right. So, all right, Beetlejuice two. You need to chill on the the saying. All right, 
You quit that shit. Why? Because it's not right. But why can't it it's be? It's not right, Aaron. But, but, but it's but, not. It's it's a placeholder for not figuring out what the fuck you're saying. You need to quit your shit. You need to quit saying all right. Yes, sir. Beetlejuice two. Beetlejuice two. That shit's happening. Uh, well, supposedly it's going to happen. Yeah. Um, it seems pretty goddamn confirmed at this point. Yeah. Um, Michael Keaton, he's on board. On board. Uh, Winona Ryder's on board. Tim Burton's on board. Yeah. It's... And... Um, it might be a little too late. I mean, I, I... I mean, I own Beetlejuice that, like, that movie's still fucking great. I don't think I've seen it in the last... I don't know. Ten years. It it's it's still great. I think it's ten fucking years for me. It's like oh, I haven't done that in ten years. <laughs> I'm an old man. Yeah. Oh man. Speaking of ten years, my high school reunion's coming up. Oh shit. Yeah. I don't plan on going. All right. Yeah. I don't have one of those to look forward to. Yeah, I'm sure you wouldn't go if you did. Yeah. I don't know. I might show up just for shits and giggles. I know that after I stopped going to LEC, I uh, I went in there. Like, a year and a half later, or two years later, or something, just because I was, like, a block down the street anyway. Yeah. And I wanted to say hi to Sue, Sue Mowry, who was the, let's call her the principal. Uh-huh. And uh, I walked in, and she walked up to me looking really surprised and gave me a hug, and I was like, what's up, Sue? And she was like, we were told that you died. What the fuck? I was like, uh, <laughs> clearly I have not. <laughs> Like, uh, do you do you recall who told you this? And she's like, no, but we just we just kind of heard. And I was like, oh well, they were wrong. <laughs> Fuck. Don't believe in rumors. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd show up and be like, I'm alive, and they'd be like, no, hide the chocolate milk. He's back. He's gonna take our milk. Uh, I was not necessarily a bully, but I owned that school, so. <sighs> You, you mentioned something about there being a beetle berry? Yeah, something, something like, like that. Be beetle berry or... Like... Uh, beetle juice's cousin. I, 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 th there's no more details than that. Yeah. Which is sad. There should be more. I wonder who the fuck would play it. What What is wrong with you people and, I mean... What actor could they get from the same era? Kevin Costner? Kevin Costner? Nah. Nah, he's not the best of actors. I don't know. Who the fuck did they get to play Beetlejuice's cousin? David Arquette. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> David Arquette. I doubt you'll ever hear this podcast. But just just in case, I, I want to I wanna give you a piece of advice. Stop acting. Because if you keep it up, I'm going to strangle you. I'm I... not good at it. I can't even remember who he is. Eight-legged freaks. It's the first thing that comes to mind. Wait a minute. Was he the guy... He did lots Squinty of commercials. Squinty-eyed motherfucker. He did a lot of commercials, didn't he? Uh, yeah. The only reason that guy's name is remotely in my head is because of Frisky Dingo. Huh. The first episode of Frisky Dingo. It's just one of those people. Like, you know, sometimes you... You see somebody. You don't even necessarily meet him. You just see him on the side of the street, and you're like, I don't fucking like you. Yeah. He's like that. Yeah. I just don't fucking like him. There's something about him that I just can't fucking stand. Wasn't he in the Scream movies? Yeah. Maybe that's it. Okay. Maybe, maybe that's it. I don't recall liking those. Yeah. Which is weird, because a lot of people seem to recall liking those. Being like, it was yeah. a great horror movie. And I'm like, no, it wasn't. Yeah, no. We followed the same fucking footsteps of every other... You know, slasher flick that came before it, except this time he had a doofy ass costume on. Yeah, like I've heard a lot of people be like, "Oh yeah, it was great because it like it mocked the like the classic horror slasher movie." Yeah, and I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't mean that it was good. The slasher like, movie genre seems to be dying off. Yeah, other uh, than like recently, I watched Hatchet one through three. I haven't seen any of this. Those have uh, Kane Hodder playing the, oh, okay. the killer, which for anybody who's uneducated in the vein of horror related And crap, shame on you if you don't know this. <laughs> Kane Hodder played Jason Voorhees multiple times yeah, in the Friday played, the 13th movie. He is the only person to play Jason more than once. Well, more than twice. 
Who played it more than who played I it? I don't twice? remember the guy's name, but somebody played him twice. Uh, but yeah, he's he's not not the biggest dude in the world. He's kind of short. Yeah, he's six four. Okay, it's not that short, but well, by comparison to people yeah. like a Kinsman or whatever, who's yeah. like seven foot tall. Yeah, they did. They did have to angle the shot upward at him to make him look yeah, bigger. Well, yeah, you got your movie magic ship there, but he <laughs> he kind of gave the character the character that it has. Yeah, like the whole turn the head and then follow where the head points. More animalistic. He gave that character that. Yeah. A lot of the mannerism, manner, uh, mannerisms, the slowly, you know, or quickly sitting up after being murdered and getting up in that slow fashion, and that's that's all him. Mm-hmm. He added that to the character. And he kind of brings a lot of the same traits, but a lot more wild behavior to the character in Hatchet, the character of Crowley. Okay. So you, you might want to check him out. I, I'm they, going to check that out. They're like the right mixture of slasher movie... Mm. And comedy. I like it. Funnier I, than shit. I like I like funny funny killing. The effects are primarily practical. Nice. Which is good. I I'm a huge fan of practical. Practical effects, effects are something that's getting lost in this day and age. Yeah. Like um, the last uh, Wolfman movie with Benicio del Toro. Mm. Did you see that? Uh the the Wolfman himself was completely CG, right? Completely CG. <sighs> but the guy who had done the practical effects for American Werewolf in London yeah. Had made all of the practical effects necessary to complete that movie practically. Yeah. And they were like, no, we're just going to go with CG. That's such bullshit. Yeah. That's such I saw an interview bullshit. with him. He was extremely pissed about that. Uh, yeah. Like, that shit's not fucking easy to do. You know? No. That, like, that had to be months yeah. of fucking work. Like, Jesus Christ. Oh, man. Also, uh, Fucking feast! If nobody's seen Feast, watch Feast. Feast is good. I've I've only seen the first one. I think you gave me the third one. Yeah, I downloaded the third one. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I saw the first one and the second one. And the second one was more outlandish than the first one. The first one was really fucking funny. The third one looks dodgy on the effects scale. Yeah, yeah, the little. But I'll take that with a grain of salt, just because I'm sure there'll be some interesting, enjoyable shit in there. Yeah. Like, Feast 2, another fucking spoiler, you get to see a baby get hucked off a two-story building and fly like a block before it smashes into a puddle on the ground. <clears throat> Never seen that in a horror movie before. <laughs> that was new to me, so points on them for that. There's not a whole oh, lot of baby man. death and murders, or mm. ba- baby death in movies. <laughs> oh. oh, the things we love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um... I just like a little bit of originality from time to time. And that yeah. kind of hits the spot because you don't see that. Uh, like, a, a whole movie can be okay and then have one part that kind of solidifies the movie for me. Like yeah. the last Rambo movie. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the, good. He cuts you know? that guy. Yeah, I liked it all the way through. But then the part that made me fucking love that movie was when he gets up in the back of the Jeep and just points the fifty cal at the guy in the driver's seat. Oh, and, and he just tears him Turns into, into liquid. I just <laughs> fucking loved it. And then, and then when he fu- he like comes up behind that guy and like sticks the knife in his stomach and then just pulls it out yeah. and he rolls down that hill and it like the top part of the torso rotates the, a little away. Yeah, and it's just like fucking great. But... Like uh, that's awesome. You don't ever see that kind of thing in fucking movies because people either don't think about it or or they, they believe people will be too sensitive. Yeah, that'll be too disturbing. And. Like, I guarantee there are a lot of fucking people out there that like horror movies that are just like us that are looking for that kind oh, of absolutely. thing. It, just little touches like that really, really make a movie. Yeah. A little bit of blood and gore goes a long way. Mm-hmm. Has since forever. The Romans knew it. Mm-hmm. That's why you had your <laughs> fucking gladiators people go and thrive on that shit. Same thing now, but with no actual bloodshed. Yeah. I mean, better all around. Yeah. You don't really have to, you know, throw a baby off a roof to get the effect of throwing a baby off a roof. Nah. Nah. A doll filled with blood works just fine. Yeah. Practical effects. (laughs) (laughs) You shape a baby out of hamburger and (laughs) spray paint it pink. (laughs) 
Oh, oh man. Um, Welcome to the Baby Mutilation Podcast. <laughs> uh, brought to you by Similac. <laughs> <laughs> brought to you by the band Infant Annihilator. Oh, man. You ever heard of them? Infant Annihilator? No. Talented motherfuckers. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Very good. I'm surprised I haven't... It, I'm, I'm, I bet there probably is a band called this, but... Infanticide? I'm sure there probably is. Yeah, it's probably like a French black metal band or something. Yeah, probably. It's hard to find a band name, man, so I'm sure it's taken. <clears throat> yeah. Next topic. Midgets, dwarves, little people, and their role in movies, Hollywood, TV shows. Just popular media in general. Yeah. What about them? I feel like they're not utilized enough. And uh, the industry overlooks them, and eh. it's bullshit. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people overlook them. Yeah. Um, but, okay, I, I can't remember the actor's name, uh, but he's probably one of the most successful... Um, I Okay. You talking about Warwick Davies? Yeah, probably. Warwick Davies? Um, all right. First off, I'm going to... Take a few steps back. I'm probably going to say midget a lot. So? And I know that, you know, some people find that offensive and, like, the, like, politically correct way of talking about them is, like, little people. But that sounds... That, that, yeah, that sounds that, even more fucking that sounds, demeaning. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I just want to say that, like... Dwarf might be all right because well yeah but but like a they dwarf, got you know that that certain amount of dwarf dignity that comes with a battle axe. <laughs> but if I was a midget, but, I'd have a battle axe. But a dwarf and a midget are different. Sure. But but you yeah, got your dwarf. Like, you got your primordial dwarfism. Yeah. 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 I got you. I got you. But uh, but yeah, like little people just sounds. It sounds like, demeaning. It sounds bullshit. Midget demeaning. does not sound demeaning. To me. Yeah, no. Like, I mean, I, I feel like it's all about the way you say it. You know, at my last job, there was a customer who, who used to come in. I haven't seen him in a long time. Mm. And uh, he was co-owner of a local pizza company. Mm. And he drove a hearse. Okay. And I was told about him. And one night, you now the first time I meet this guy, a hearse pulls up. And I go walking out to it rather quickly because I'm curious. Yeah. I look at it and I'm like, no shit. He looks at me he's like, what? I was told there was a midget that drives a hearse. <laughs> and he just kind of looked at me and smiled. It's like, okay, we can be friends. Nice. You know, it's like, I appreciate the way you approached this situation. Yeah. I was like, can I look at the pedals? <laughs> <laughs> he had extenders on the pedals and shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was completely cool about it. That's good. Like, I remember him talking shit to uh, my old coworker. And I was like, if you want, I'll put you on the counter so you can punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> That his response was like yours. He laughed about it. All right. All right. So. I think that's how it should be. I mean, if you have it, something that that even some members of society can look at as a disability like that, and I don't understand how they look at it as a disability because yeah. I bump my head on shit all the time, and I understand that, you know, that wouldn't happen were I that tall. Well, yeah, no. But I think you should be fine with it. Own it. Yeah. Like, There's nothing you can fucking do about it. Own it. Yeah. Be who you are. <laughs> and, you know, if somebody doesn't accept who you are, fuck, fuck them. them. But yeah, okay. So uh, you tell me, and I'll hold him up, hold you up, so you can punch him in the face. Goddamn right. Um, it's like chicken fighting. You know, <laughs> cool. Somebody on your shoulders. <coughs> okay, but yeah. So Warwick Davies. Warwick Davies. He's had so many roles. Um, I feel like he's a really good actor. Yeah, uh, Willow. Uh, the Leprechaun. The entirety of the Leprechaun series. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, one of the Ewoks in Star Wars. Yeah. More recently, I've seen him on, uh... Fuck, what was that show? Uh, Ricky Gervais send his buddy out to get tortured around the world. Oh, I hate that show. Fuck you, that show's funnier than shit. It's irritating. An idiot abroad. Yeah, but it, it's irritating seeing, like... It, it'd be one thing if it was, like, understandably, like, oh, this guy's, you know, like an idiot. But... It's like he's a complete fucking idiot when it comes to everything. It's like, how how does a person like that even exist? 
<laughs> by not leaving your little fucking corner in the UK, wherever the hell you live, I guess. But there are things that you, like, you're, like, I watched one episode, he went to, like, China, and he, like, he just didn't know anything, like, whatsoever. Like, I don't, I don't understand why I, somebody can't be, like, like, have no experience with any of this stuff. Well, by just not giving a shit up till that point. Yeah. Right. If you got enough shit going on in day to day life, and you got your own crap to worry about, and your mind's not allowed to wander outside of the little bubble that you have around yourself, and you don't seek knowledge from outside sources, then you remain oblivious. Yeah. And if he truly is a fucking idiot, then that seems like that's the path an idiot might walk. Yeah. Back to the midgets. <laughs> <laughs> um. <coughs> okay. I feel like they are under appreciated and underused in media. Um, There's no good way to talk about that, really, is there? Without the whole under or overlook them or... Yeah, I know. But, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. I don't know if they're underused or not. I mean... Well, I mean, well like, okay. I there's feel not, like... There's not a whole lot of roles specific. Well, I, I feel fucking... like this is a perfect example. The Lord of the Rings series. Yeah. Instead of getting actual dwarves or midgets to play these parts, they just got normal people and then shot it, like, really funny to make them well, look tiny. I think a lot of that has to do with physical limitations. Mm. Yeah. Like, well, uh, the dwarves in The Lord of the Rings are, let's say, predominantly proportionate. I've met quite a few midgets in my life. And I've seen quite a few midgets and pictures and shit in my life, and they're not, you know, of, of a, a unified proportion. Arm length, leg length, it all differs sometimes to pretty drastic degrees. Yeah, this is true. So that is, uh, like, the biggest problem I see with it. Okay. So when you have somebody who is a full, you know, normal height, yeah, you know, six foot or whatever, and they're capable of wielding heavy fucking armor and shit and you just scale them down yeah that that makes quite a bit of sense on a you know practical level yeah and, just, the, and the same applies to people that are really really fucking big like how many people over you know like seven three have you ever seen that don't have to use crutches to walk around and shit at some point very good point very good point it's all physical limitations and it's <laughs> it's nothing to do with them or their acting abilities hmm. like uh Fuck, Warwick Davies, I I wouldn't say that he's a, a great actor. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd say he was, you know, his size probably got him a lot of roles. Yeah. And he did those roles well. Yeah. What's the character? Ter Tyrion Lannister? Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, that, is it Tyrion? Uh, I think it's... In Lord of the Rings, or Lord of the Rings, fucking uh, <laughs> Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. He's, he's good for that role. He's not a bad actor. He's a good actor. I've, seen, I've only I've seen him in one other movie that I could think of. Uh, Knights of Bad Astem. I haven't seen that movie. Um, I know that he's been in another movie other than that. And he was in Nip Tuck. Okay. And uh, he was an interesting... That, so. Nip Tuck is cool. Uh, well, Nip Tuck is interesting. Okay. It's, uh, it's very entertaining. It's like a soap opera, but with, like, surgery. Yeah. The only thing I've watched <laughs> that I could say is, like, a soap opera is fucking supernatural and again monsters yeah. well a second episode when they did the wendigo right i was like that's it i'm watching this oh. i uh i've seen the wendigo portrayed as like a werewolf type thing so many fucking times that it bugs the shit out of me that's nowhere near the algonquin fucking lore for the no. for the wendigo but yeah uh the guy that plays Tyrion lannister um he's a really good actor and he plays the role perfectly you know I just I feel like there should be more roles. Yeah, we, but I mean there has there has we, to. It, it's like we write movies with these characters and we just leave out little people. Unless it's for a comedy purpose. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like we we always they, never, they, they don't, we always I'll put them, them in when they're, they're going to be. They don't really get many serious roles. Yeah, it, it, it's they're just going to be like the trope little like oh we're going to laugh at like the midget. Like uh, what's the little and, dude's name that? <clears throat> Beat up Jim Carrey and fucking liar liar or not liar liar uh, me myself and Irene. 
Oh, that guy. Uh, I can't remember his name, yeah. but... I've yeah. seen him in a bunch of shit, though. I just yeah. can't remember his fucking name. Um, and, and he's good. I, I believe he's a comedian. Yeah, well, yeah. You mostly only ever see them playing a comedy, joke. Comedy fucking, relief role, yeah. Like a parody of what they are. And I feel like that's got to be really demeaning for them. You know, like... Yeah and no, but I mean... Look, look if you are someone who is of that stature... Yeah. And you want money. Well, yeah. Hollywood's kind of short on people. Fuck, there it goes again. <laughs> <coughs> Hollywood is kind of lacking in people that are of that stature. Yeah. And at least, at the very least, it gives you a good opportunity. Well, yeah. But, like... That's, I'm sure that's like a, a far-sighted way of looking at it, but... This is probably going to be a very uh, big jumping comparison. Like, what if... You know, like, I feel like it's almost the same as having, like, oh, we're going to put a black guy in our movie and he's going to eat watermelon and, you know, like, say Massa and they just put him in there to laugh at it. Mm. And if, if I were a midget, I would be, <laughs> I feel like I would be offended that, like, oh, yeah, I'm a part of the Lollipop Guild and fuck, you know, like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're probably right, but I'm sure that a lot of them it just kind of rolls right off their back at this point. Yeah, probably. like I mean, if you're uh, they're they're born into a circumstance that they just kind of have to deal with. Yeah, that's that's all there is to it. So I'm sure for a lot of them it irritates them, but not to the degree where it's going to ruin anything for them. You yeah. know, the why why let they're it not, why let it ruin it. anything for it? And funny uh, the stereotypical black man you bring up. Yeah. I was at work one night, and for those of you listening, I used to work at a gas station. Here in Oregon, you fill people's cars for them, so I'd meet everybody that I went out there to put, you know, fuel in their car. And I go walking up to a car one night, and there's a really, really dark-skinned black man inside the, inside the car, and uh, he's mowing down on a piece of watermelon, and he has a bucket of chicken in the passenger seat. And I start laughing to the point where I'm bent over, kind of holding my stomach. And he asks me, very irritated, the fuck are you laughing about? And I point at the watermelon, and I say watermelon, and I point at the chicken, and I say chicken. And he starts laughing. Because he understands that, that he's, like, filling that fucking stereotype. <laughs> he's like, oh. Oh, <laughs> shit. There's, there's a lot of truth to a lot of stereotypes. Yeah. Uh, even if it's universal. Like, I don't mind watermelon. I fucking love chicken, so the yeah. same shit applies to me. Yeah. But stereotypes usually come about because of an element of truth. They're not well, something yeah. that just poofs into existence. And he got that. Yeah. He could have chose to be offended. Yeah. But instead, he saw the humor. And I'm sure that that applies to even, you know, little folks. Mm. The fucking... Hobbit people, whatever. I'll call you guys whatever you want me to call you. Yeah. Like, if midget's a problem, let me know what the fuck to say. But as if, of yet, midget's not been an issue. If you are um, of small stature and you have something that you would like... I, I don't want to... Uh, if you want the average person to call you something other than tell them these things... Well, tell them and comment. Yeah, leave a comment leave on here. Let comments. us know. Yeah. And we'll talk about Hopefully it. Hopefully we don't get too many conflicting answers. Like, one oh. being like, oh, I hate the word midget. The other being like, I prefer the word midget to oh, dwarf. I guarantee if also, we get, if we get enough people, that, they're, we're going to get a lot of conflict. Well, yeah. What, well, what the fuck ever. I mean, that's just, that's just a part of putting shit on YouTube in the first yeah. place. If you are a midget, I have a piece of advice for you. And I'm about six foot tall, 300 pounds. I'm a big person. I'm not tiny. Become a plumber. Ooh. Because I can't fit in fucking crawl spaces. And every time I've gone under a house, I've I've always wished that I could, like, shrink down yeah. in size. Become a fucking plumber. That, that does sound like a good job. Yeah. Choice. But we're not saying that you should only be relegated to plumbing. No. No, but no, no, no. <laughs> you can be whatever you want. Other facets of plumbing might be difficult, like installing a shower head. <laughs> but you can, <laughs> you can get to all the shit underneath the house that I can't fucking easily get to. 
You could be a part of a team. Look at it that way. Could you imagine that? What? Like, you call a plumber and, like, a van rolls up and then, like, 15 engines just pile (laughs) up. (laughs) All carrying ladders. That'd be great. (laughs) That'd also be terrible. They're like, hi-ho, (laughs) hi-ho. March into your fucking house. Sorry, guys. Yeah, we're sorry. sorry. We're sorry. (laughs) <laughs> Sometimes you just can't help it, and we apologize. Oh, man. To a degree. <laughs> Again, own it. I'm sure you're fine with it, but... Because you've dealt with it. Yeah, don't get offended. Don't be offended. <clears throat> oh, man. That's the, that's one thing that people do too much. Huh. They get fucking offended. and Yeah, the world's gotten pretty goddamn weak. It's, it's not... Like, what's the point of getting offended? If if you've got you know something really to say about something that that offends you, then express yourself. Yeah. But don't just take take the attitude of all oh, these motherfuckers. Yeah. It's like, look, this is a problem, and here's why it's a problem. Yeah. Because wh- wh- whenever you approach something with an attitude like that, and I, I'm sure it's like this for a lot of people, because I know it's like this for me. If you approach me with an attitude, I will respond with an attitude. Exactly. But if you approach me with a logical, you know, argument and you tell me why something's a taboo for whatever fucking reason, I'll listen. Yeah. And you it might... might not stop me from doing whatever I was doing in the first place, yeah. but I'll at least listen. Yeah. And that's more than I'd do if you came at me with, like, a, a fucking argumentative, you know, take on something. Yeah. Then all you're going to get is, you know... The Attitude. You'll, you'll turn my wanting to listen and hear what you have to say... Into, while you're talking, I'm just thinking of yeah. some way, something to say to make you even mad, yeah. like, more angry. Either provoke your ire or take apart what you're talking about. Yeah. And that doesn't really get anybody anywhere, but it happens, and it's fun when it happens. Because we do that. Yeah. That's what people do. Yeah. People are pretty shitty. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on the internet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's no real consequences. Yeah. Anonymity. Yeah. It's a... It's a quite a barrier to hide behind. Yes. Do we have any other topics that you wish to cover? Or is um, uh, Midget's kind of the, the final one? What is it? My girlfriend got bit by a dog yesterday. Last night. And, um... Do you still have the same fear of dogs you used to? Not really, but like I'm I'm wary of okay. like a dog that is you know seems. Like, Aaron here uneasy. used to be used to be pretty afraid of dogs when we were younger, and I'd like shove them into fences and shit because there would be a dog in there, and uh, that's because I'm a dick. And he used to. Uh, the thing that comes to mind is destroying your corn CDs. <clears throat> this fucker used to listen to corn way too much. The band Corn, not cans. And he had the the album Issues. And me and a kid named Daniel took Issues with the album Issues. We're sick of fucking hearing it. Uh, on one occasion, I was woken up in Aaron's yard while I was sleeping peacefully in the grass by this dipshit putting his fucking stereo next to me and blaring a song where the singer yells, wake the fuck up, over and over again. So I promptly woke the fuck up, punched his stereo, and I believe broke it. Did I break that stereo or just that speaker? Um, no, I, th- I think, well, you you punched it and it pulled the cords out of the okay. speaker, but it didn't... I, I did later kill that you, stereo. You did later, yeah. When I was borrowing it from you, it wouldn't play a CD. I punched the top of it and collapsed the disc player down to the bulk of the stereo. Yeah. Because, my bad. Yeah. Anyway, we destroyed one issue of issues... With a hammer, I believe, in Daniel's backyard. Yeah. Uh, I think we might have thrown one up on a roof. And we threw one into a yard with a dog. Yeah. Because you're afraid of dogs. Yeah. 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 So, my girlfriend got bit by a dog. Uh, Completely unprovoked. What kind of dog? Huh? Uh, It looked like a mutt. I'm not sure. Big dog, little dog. A medium-sized dog. Medium dog. But, um... So, basically, 
I was, I just got off work, I was sitting at the bar, across the street from where I work, and she got there, she parked in the parking lot across the street, was walking across the street, this guy holding uh, the leash to these two dogs, sitting at a table away from me, mm -hmm. um, as she was walking across the street, one of the dogs started barking at her, and, you know, we didn't really think much of it, and... Like, she walked up to the table I was sitting at and, like, kind of closely walking t by my table, like, away from the dog to get come and sit down. And the dog, like, lunged and bit her in the back of the calf. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's not... Like, she's going to be all right. Any puncture wounds? One puncture wound, one tear. And then, like... Some some scraping. Mm -hmm. I'll show you the picture, but uh, like I can't recall ever having a dog actually break my skin. Yeah, the the thing about it is like she, you know, wasn't like the thing that she's m mainly mad about was the people and their lack of taking responsibility and lack of empathy and just how fucking pieces of shits they were. What, people sitting outside of the bar? Consuming alcohol? Go figure. Well, okay, so, all right. He was... Not that I'm against alcohol, for all y'all listening. I do consume minor amounts of it on occasion myself. I'm just saying. He was holding his girlfriend's dogs. Mm hmm And, um... After... The dog bit her. You know, he's like, oh shit, oh shit, uh, I, I, I should get out of here, and blah, blah, blah. And he walks over to the fucking door, and he yells her name into the bar because she was inside. She comes out, and he's like, your fucking dog just bit this chick. And like, instead of, you know, showing any kind of I'm care, sorry. they just start arguing. She just starts yelling at him about, like, what did you do? Like, like, I, I've been with them all day. Like, like, they haven't been in trouble at all and blah, 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 blah. And, mm. and not once did they, you know, like, oh, I'll, I'm terribly sorry. I'll take care of your fucking medical bills, anything like that. Well, does she need to go to the hospital for it? No. Okay. But... What like, ha like, what happened? Did she sneak up on the dog? What happened? No! The dog just chose to bite her? Yeah. So it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Sometimes you just don't fucking like somebody. Yeah, it, it just <laughs> it just fucking happened. The like, dog's just like, that fucking bitch right there. Yeah, I'm and, eating that calf muscle. Um, but yeah, like... The girl eventually came, down, came over while I was going to the uh, uh, girlfriend's car to get her first aid kit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was like, oh, um, like, sorry, I'll, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck is that? You know, like, oh, I'll buy you a beer. Thanks? You gotta um, wonder how it like, would have been if it was the other way around. Yeah. Like, would they be fine with just having a beer bought for mm -hmm. them? But yeah, th this is the... Uh, no, that's... All right, okay, here like that. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. But, you know, it hurts. And everything. But she's not the type of person to be like, oh, I'm gonna sue you. And, like, she, you know, she didn't want to get the cops involved or anything like that. She didn't want to see the dog put down well, or huh. anything like that. She just And wanted... that's usually, like, the, the first recourse well, yeah. whenever anything like that's brought to the attention of the authorities. Mm -hmm. It's like, this dog needs to be euthanized. Yeah. But all she wanted was them to be fucking people and take responsibility and you know but they didn't and they were like they ended up like after she was like oh I'll buy you a beer and uh I keep saying girlfriend because I you know I don't want to you know Sarah put her name on the internet and you know whatever um but she's like uh no you know no I don't need a beer like I've already got a beer right here <laughs> I'm fine, but the chick's like, oh, well, well, I'll be, I'll be here for a while, and, 
Like, I'll, I'll be, you know, back and, we'll, like, I'll talk to you. She goes back over to her fucking boyfriend and, like, they start yelling at each other because they had been fucking arguing, like, all night while I, you know, I've been waiting. Mm -hmm. And then they just fucking leave. And they walked out on their fucking tab. They walked out on some food that Seriously? they ordered. Yeah. Huh. And uh, we ended up getting their tater tots. But... That all seems to go uh, out in the wash then, doesn't it? It's, it's just fucking bullshit. Like, like, why the fuck can't people take responsibility? Like, you, you should... You're an adult. You're old enough to drink. You go out in fucking public. You should understand and accept the repercussions. How old do you imagine they were? They were probably early 20s. Mid-20s. Yeah, but it's it's a weird thing to think about, but not too much mentally for me at least seems to be different between now and when I was younger, mm. which is strange because I see people 50 years ago where, you know, when they were adults and you see them on like documentaries and shit, they're clearly adults. There is clear responsibility. Yeah. There is clear ownership of problems and, and, you know, clear concern about what's going on. Yeah. I don't see that much. No. In, in day-to-day life, I do not observe that much. It yeah. seems like something's been lost. I feel like, I feel the exact same way. Like people like, our age or younger than us or even older <laughs> than us by a bit don't have responsibility in, in the way that I thought responsibility was when I was younger. Exactly. Myself, personally, I feel like I've, I've done something wrong. I've wronged somebody. I'm going to own up for it. I'm going to take responsibility, even if, you know, like, oh, I'm going to, like, there's going to be punishment for me being, like, yeah. th my bad. You know, I did this. I caused this to happen. Whatever. But the fact but of the I, matter is that you, I'm, you it know, is your bad. I'm owning you it. You did it. And, and you're going to take I'm, responsibility I'm for it. I'm sorry for it. And I'm, you know... Whereas to how these people with the hungry dog just kind of bailed. Yeah. Fucking pieces of shit. I've not had the best of relationship with dogs, but I've never had one puncture my skin or anything. On yeah, I, I've never been bitten. Most of them bad. are just afraid of me and they bark and then run. Yeah. It's a gift. Except that I want to pet them. Yeah. And then they run away and I don't get to pet them. I like animals. Most of them don't like me. Especially Siamese cats. They want me dead. <clears throat> Were you there at Daniel's house that one day when one charged me from like a half a block away on his porch? Like, like a cat? Yeah, like uh, the front of his house. Here's the porch looking yeah, out this yeah. way. The cat came running from, what, Holgate? Or yeah, whatever. yeah. It was like a half a block away, like in front of the, the next house, the house down from that. Mm. Ran straight at me up on, up on his porch and started clawing at me. Were you I there? Think, I think so. Because, yeah, you were usually there when yeah, I was at yeah, Daniel's yeah. house. Oh, man. <laughs> That's not the only time that shit's happened to me. Like, all Siamese cats have a telekinetic link or something that just signals a trapper kill instinct when they see me. At least Coffee likes you. Coffee's not a Siamese cat. Well, yeah. And Coffee's my prisoner. She doesn't have a choice. <laughs> Right. She's not his pet. She is his <laughs> she, is, she is my ward. Where I live, <laughs> where I live, you can't have outdoor animals. So if the cat goes outside, and it pains me to say this, a small part of my dignity dies every time I think about it. I gotta put a fucking leash on her. I refuse to hold the leash. I'm not gonna walk my cat. Yeah. So what I've done. Is to it's the opposite pretty, end of the it's leash. It's pretty funny to see. To the opposite end of the leash, I've attached a carabiner, and I clip this carabiner to the U lock for my bike. <laughs> and I put that on the ground. And if she can drag that fucking U lock, she can go wherever she wants. But the fact of the matter is, I'll be able to catch her when she bolts. Yeah. I wish that wasn't the case, but that's what it is. Yeah. Uh. Well, um, you got any, uh, <laughs> a little song? What, a jingle? Yeah, a jingle. We really are going to do this until they make us fucking edit it out, aren't we? Yeah. Um, 
Do you have a jingle? I'm really bad at this kind of stuff. <sighs> You're the musician. <laughs> um, God, jingles, fucking. I, 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 nothing's coming to mind. Um, I, uh, nothing's. Yeah, let's see, let's see. You gonna look up jingles? Yeah, I'm we look. gotta have some sort of copyright infringement at the end of the fucking video or the end of the uh, audio, I suppose. Hold on, hold on. Um, if it's this hard now, three episodes in, imagine how hard it's gonna be <laughs> when we get to like five episodes. We'll, we'll be better at this. We'll be better at this. <laughs> we'll have our infringement all planned out. <laughs> Our scheme for getting ourselves in shit. Ah. Here, uh, Finding anything? Um. No? Hold on. Fuck it. Uh, Mantle's fresh and full of life!